bills for introduction. There are no bills for introduction, so the House comes to questions for oral answer. And the first question stands in the name of Dr. Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Prime Minister and asks. Does he stand by his comments that there is nothing wrong with ministers accepting hospitality from the government's banker, Westpac? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, yes. Dr Russell uh, Thank you, Mr Speaker. Does he have any concerns about ministerial staff accepting the corporate hospitality of Westpac? If not, why not? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Well, Mr Speaker, I would expect them to act uh, carefully and in a considered manner, uh, and even though they are not bound by the Cabinet Manual in the same way that it is laid out in the Cabinet Manual. Dr Russell Norman. Does he consider that public servants, such as staff from the Treasury, should be able to enjoy the corporate hospitality of Westpac? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, that is a matter for the State Services Commissioner. Dr Russell okay. Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can he guarantee that no ministerial staff seconded from Treasury have enjoyed the corporate hospitality of Westpac? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no. Uh, Dr Russell Norman. <coughs> Will he then follow up with the Minister of Finance as to whether any of his ministerial staff seconded from Treasury have been enjoying Westpac's corporate boxes, given that public servants are not supposed to be accepting such gifts? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, no, and I think the edict was over the Rugby World Cup, not prior to that, in the same way that I won't be delving into that member's mind to see whether he changed it on his views to America when he accepted free travel uh, from the US State Department. Order. 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 Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Would the Prime Minister... Order. I want to hear, I want to hear the supplementary question. Would the Prime Minister have any concerns about Treasury staff receiving corporate gifts in the form of access to Westpac's corporate boxes, given Treasury is the decision-maker for the government's multi-million dollar banking contract. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, no, I don't think um, the member's actually right. I think the process is being run by MED. Uh, they'll then make a recommendation, and that recommendation will go to ministers who are likely to base their decision on the recommendation. What I'm fairly sure is that we won't be following the suggestion at the Green Party conference that goes to Kiwi Bank, and that's because Kiwi Bank themselves have come out and said that while they have the ambition, they don't have the capability. Uh, Dr Russell Norman. Thank you, Mr Speaker. If, if the final decision on the master banking contract is therefore in the hands of ministers, under the influence of ministerial advisers, does he have any concerns that both ministers and ministerial advisers have been in the receipt of corporate hospitality from Westpac? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I, Mr. Speaker, I, 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 Point of order, the Honourable Trevor Mr. Speaker, I find it's unusual to come to the defence of the government at this time, but I think it is important that the question of, of undue influence uh, of people on members of parliament, even in my suggestion in their ministerial roles, is a suggestion that shouldn't be made in this House. I'll hear Dr. Russell Norman. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have, uh, if I have inadvertently made an inference of undue influence, that's certainly not my intent. I'm questioning the process of awarding the contract. What I'll, in do, with what I'll do is allow the member to repeat his question and make sure, though, there's no uh, implication of, of undue influence. Uh, Dr. Russell Norman. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the Prime Minister accept that if, as he's just said, that it is up to ministers to make the decision about the allocation of the master banking contract? that the public may rightly have concerns when they see ministers receiving corporate hospitality from Westpac. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Yeah, no more than they would have concerns about uh, Russell Norman going off to uh, America, paid for by the US State Department. Mr Speaker, I don't really like the inference from the member because it's without foundation. There are well set out guidelines in the Cabinet guidelines. There's also a pecuniary interest list, and the member is simply making accusations to get on the front page of the paper, and I think the member can do better than that. Point of order, order. 
Order, a point of order has been called. Dr Russell Norman. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. I seek leave to table my pecuniary interest statement where I made it transparent about the State Department gift and allow no, 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 all no, order, of order, corporate gifts from order, Westpac. Order. Order. There will be silence. Order. Now, Dr Russell Norman is very lucky that I don't take more serious action because he knows I was on my feet. He kept uh, speaking when there was not a matter of a point of order that, I mean, they started out on a point of order, I fully accept, but then he went on to matters beyond point of order, and we do not table publications that are readily available to all members as pecuniary interests are. Point of order, the right on Mr. Speaker, Minister. I think um, I would ask you to reflect uh, when you have a moment on the comments made by Dr. Norman. What he's actually said in the House this afternoon is that members are in order. breach no, of no, their pecuniary order. interests. No, order, order. Uh, forgive me, but that is not a point of order the Prime Minister is seeking to raise there. And uh, I think um, the questions I accept were may have had implications, but that because of that I allowed the answers to uh, somewhat reflect on the questioner, which I may not have done under other circumstances. And so I think the situation is, has balanced itself out. I think the question of, uh, in the answers received uh, had some of his actions questioned, and, uh, and I think that's where the matter should rest for the moment. But I do urge members to be careful when asking questions to make sure they don't imply improper practice. And I apologise that I should have uh, uh, come down more heavily on the, the, sec on the last supplementary question, because I did uh, I did err there in not, uh, in not making sure that question was rephrased more quickly than I did. Question number two, the Honourable Annette King. I'll point of order the right honourable Sorry, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I don't wish to prolong things, but it is actually against um, standing orders for a member to deliberately mislead the House. And the point I was going to make is the member has actually made an accusation that people have deliberately misled the no, House. No, no order. Uh, I, I apologise, but members cannot use the standing order procedure to accuse other members of, of deliberately misleading the House. There is a proper procedure for doing that. I mean, if the member has offended uh, an individual member, they can make a personal explanation. Uh, there are other procedures, though, to be followed if it's believed that a member has deliberately uh, and willfully misled the House. Uh, there are other procedures to be followed on that. We don't use the standing order procedure for that purpose. Point of order, the Honourable Simon Powell. Thank you, Mr Speaker. As somebody who has declared in their pecuniary interest register that, that I received hospitality from Westpac, I do take offence at the comments made by the member well, that all members on this order. side of the House did not. Order. Well, if the member wishes to make a personal explanation, he can seek leave to do that, but he cannot use the point of order process to make a, a political statement the way he just has. Standing orders do not provide for members. There is a procedure. If the member believes, if the member has been offended, he can seek leave to make a personal explanation. Oh, well, if the member is seeking order, the member cannot get to his feet under a point of order and claim someone has misled the House or claim he has been offended. He can make leave, he can seek leave to, if the member believes that uh, an unparliamentary uh, statement was made, then. Uh, I've already dealt with that matter and I've accepted that I perhaps erred in not coming down rapidly enough on the, the questioner when he implied and appeared to imply in a question possible inappropriate behaviour. But the, there's a, if, if members believe, if a member believes some other member has misled the, had deliberately and willfully misled the House, the procedure to be gone through for that is not the point of order process. Well, I've dealt with that point of order. Does the member have a new point of order? I do have a point Dr. of order, Dr. Russell Mr. Speaker. Point of order. M Mr. Speaker, just to clarify, at no point was I suggesting that order. the members had... Order! The member resume his seat immediately. Now, this is just abusing the standing orders of the House. We do not carry on a debate under point of order. Members should be careful to not abuse the, uh, the standing orders in the first place. And I've already apologised to the House that I blame myself for letting things get to the point they did and I'll watch more closely in the future.